This diagram of OJ's estate was used by the prosecution to show the jurors the locations of the evidence. I'll use it here to provide a perspective for the scenes depicted in the reenactment. When OJ returned from McDonald's with Cato Kalin at 9.35 p.m., he entered through his Ashford gate and parked his Bentley here. Cato returned to his room via this path, and OJ exited out of his Ashford gate and left in his Bronco, which was parked here. Although it's not depicted on this diagram, and the testimony was unclear, it would appear that OJ's older daughter came home later that night and pulled the Bentley up to here, then parked behind it. In any event, at 10.22 p.m., Alan Park, the limo driver, drove up Rockingham Drive and spotted the address 360 here on the curb as he drove by. Of course, the Bronco was not there at that time. He continued to Ashford, where he made a right, drove past the Ashford gate, made a U-turn, and parked about here, where he waited. At about 10.40 p.m., Alan Park drove over to the Rockingham gate to decide whether he should pull up and enter through this gate. Again, the Bronco was still not there at that time. After checking out the driveway, he determined that it would be better and easier to enter through the Ashford gate, so he backed up Rockingham Drive and pulled up to the Ashford gate and began ringing the bell. At about 10.52 p.m., returning from murdering Nicole and Ron, O.J. pulls up and quickly parks outside of his Rockingham gate, leaving the Bronco with its rear sticking out. He exits with the black bag that contains clothes, shoes, knife, and his right-handed bloody glove on top. He might have dripped this drop of blood at this point in time, or possibly when he returned to the Bronco. He enters through the gate with the bag in his left hand, so that any blood that would drip from his left hand would fall onto the bag. He travels down his south walkway with the intent of stashing the black bag back here somewhere. With it being pitch black back there, OJ ends up slamming into Cato's air conditioner. The collision causes the right-handed bloody glove to fall from the top of the black bag to the ground. Knowing that Cato had to have heard the bang, OJ quickly has to change his plans, so he returns to the Bronco with the black bag. At some point about here, OJ either transfers the black bag to his right hand, or the cut might have stopped then started bleeding again. Either way, based upon their location, it would appear that he dripped these two drops as he exited the gate. OJ puts the black bag back into the Bronco, re-enters the gate, and drips more drops of blood all the way up the driveway and right into his house. As O.J. was traveling up the driveway, Cato was coming around from his room to check out the noise. Alan Park first spots Cato approaching the driveway, then in the next second sees, quote, a dark figure, O.J., walking across the driveway and entering the front door at 10.55 p.m. The timing was such that Cato did not see O.J. at this time. Finally, after O.J. cleans up and changes, he returns to the Bronco to retrieve the black bag and temporarily places it at the top of the driveway about here then goes back inside his house. Then Cato, returning from his second failed attempt at investigating the noise, sees the black bag for the first time. Minutes later, both Alan Park and Cato Kalin witness O.J. exit his front door and walk over to get the black bag. O.J. puts the black bag in the limo, and the black bag is never seen again. <laughs>